Hi guys, welcome to the Walking Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we are going to a flea market to see whether we can find any model railway bargains. So I'm at the Three County Showground in Malvern. It's their monthly flea market. So I've never been to one of these before. Let's get inside and see what we can find. The market is organised by B2B events, it happens almost every month and to get in will cost you £5. It's a big event taking up a large part of the Three Counties showground. Most stalls are outside but there are a couple of big indoor halls too. Most of these sellers do this as their main business, they're professionals, they're not just clearing out the attic, which means that the quality of the stuff being sold is generally pretty good. The sellers didn't appear to be arranged in any particular order. Someone could be selling furniture next to someone selling toys and most of the sellers had a mix of products. So we just tried to methodically work our way up and down the aisles keeping our eyes open for railway related items. And quite quickly we found a few, including this Lancashire and Yorkshire railway sign and these boxes with the GWR branding. There was quite a bit of railway related art and every so often we'd come across some books and magazines. At first we found more items related to the full sized railway but every so often we'd come across some models as well. This stool was owned by a lady called Jill who runs a company called Jill's Trains and we had a nice chat. She'd already been around the stools this morning and didn't find many bargains but she said that sometimes you can find quite a few. She's also got a shop on eBay, so if you can't make it to a market store, then why not go check it out? A lot of the models we found were older stuff from Triang or Dublo, some clockwork and template stuff as well, even some with real functioning boilers. So not really my area of expertise. There may have been some real gems there, but I just wouldn't know. Plus, a lot of the older stuff wasn't in great condition. But we did find this Hornby 00 Duchess of Montrose train set which was boxed and looked to be in fantastic condition. And I also found this crate of old Lima stuff which looked to be in pretty good condition with a few of the models still in their original boxes. Then late in the day we came across this stall called Focus Toys which had a large selection of model railway items. The guys were really nice and they sell exclusively at fairs. Normally at specialist toy fairs but many of those are still closed owing to the pandemic so they've been coming to these general fairs instead. And further down in one of the halls, there was another stall that sold some Hornby stuff as well. So I think next time I come, I'll definitely be starting in the indoor halls because this is where the majority of the good stuff seemed to be. Okay, so we've just left. We've been walking around for hours. The place is absolutely massive. There are so many stalls. I managed to find some model railway stuff and a lot of actual railway stuff. So I'll get the things that I bought back home and I'll show you what I've got and you can see whether you think it's a bargain or not. Right, we're back home and I'm shattered. We did over 10,000 steps in the few hours we were there. It was relatively successful, not a huge amount to choose from. As I said, a lot of the models were quite old, not really what I'm interested in at the moment. More collectibles rather than the type of thing that you'd put on your layout. Having said that, I still managed to spend over £100 though, so it's probably a good thing that wasn't too much to choose from. Before we get to what I bought, here's something that I came really close to buying. It's a Hornby 01 slave controller from the early 1980s when digital control was just taking off. They only wanted £10 for it but I don't have the master controller so it seemed a bit silly to buy it. But it was in perfect condition and it looked so retro and cool that I think I'll have to get a 01 at some point because they look so great. But anyway, on to what I did buy, starting with a couple of items that aren't models but are related to the railway. I wanted a few bits to decorate the new train room, so I've got these signs. They're both really heavy. Um, I'm 99% sure they're not originally from the railway, they're just reproductions. The lady was selling this one for £45, and I managed to knock Fiverr off, so I got it for £40. Was it a bargain? No. You can get these on Amazon for £37.99, so that's a £2 loss so far. 
What about the Station Master sign? Well, what about the Station Master sign? Well, the guy wanted £20 for this. I managed to get it for 10 It's in okay condition, but was it a bargain? Well, yes, it seems like these sell for between 15 and £20 online new, so that's a fiver saved. The next item is probably my favourite though. Here's a train that's also a decanter. This originally had four shot glasses, the two from the back were missing, and so was the stopper, but we managed to find a replacement. The wheels do actually move, um, although the quartering might need some adjusting. And here's the best bit, it's also a music box. It plays a slightly creepy version of Roll Out the Barrel when you lift the decanter up. Who knows why? The seller thought this might be from Japan uh, in the 1970s, as if that explained why it was so weird. It's just so random, we had to have it and paid £15. But was it a bargain? Well, it's really hard to tell. There's a version going on eBay in America for over £100. There's another one for £30. So yeah, I think we can say it's a bargain, but as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty priceless. On to the models, and all of these came from the Focus Toys stall that we found at the end. We'll start with these three wagons. This Great Western brake van was £3, but it's got a few paint marks on the side, and it says that on the tag, so I knew about it when I bought it. I can probably get those off or cover them up with some weathering. Um, moving on to this one. I collect Bestwood wagons, so I picked this one up for £4. It's missing coupling hooks, but again, I knew this because they'd written it on the little tag, and they're pretty easy to replace. And finally, an Arnold Sands wagon. Again, I've got a little collection of these going on. It's in very good condition, and it was £5. Is that good value? Well, two years ago, I'd have said that was overpriced, but since the pandemic, the second-hand price of wagons has shot up. Four to five pounds on eBay is pretty standard now. So were these a bargain? Well, I didn't try to haggle, maybe I could have got some money off, but at an average of four pounds a wagon, that's okay, I suppose. Finally, a bit of a risk and a challenge, which is the only reason I bought it. This is a Hornby Railroad Tornado in British Railway livery. It's reference R3060. It's a relatively new model, first made in 2011, and it's DCC ready, but, it doesn't work, and it's slightly damaged. Apparently the motor runs, but the wheels don't turn, and one of the smoke deflectors has come off. It says all this on the tag, so I knew about the problems before I bought it. The smoke deflector should just glue back on, and I'm hoping that it's an easy fix to get it running again. But was it a bargain? Well, it's hard to say at the moment because it doesn't work, but I paid £45 for it. These sold for 80 to 100 when new, so if I can get this back working again and looking okay, then yeah, it's probably a bargain. If I can't get it working, then I might be able to sell it for parts and get my money back that way. I'll keep you updated on my progress on this one and I'll let you know if I manage to get it working. So that was my first flea market experience, and overall I enjoyed it. It's probably better if you're into older collectible stuff, and if you're going to go along to one, make sure you take cash, because a lot of the traders don't take cards. Get there early to make sure you don't miss out on any of the bargains and be prepared to haggle. If you've enjoyed this video then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications bell if you want YouTube to let you know when new videos come out. Thanks for watching and I'll hopefully see you again soon.